Hello, welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy. It has been a while, but I am trying to get back into the swing of things. This particular journal that I'm going to share with you today took me a long time to finish. Um, I'm in the midst of my studio being built, and so I am still down in the basement. My stuff is everywhere. It's hard to find anything, and Somewhere in all of that mess is my motivation and my mojo, but I'm working on it. If you have any tips for getting your motivation back when you've lost it somewhere and you don't know where to look, please share them in the comments below. I could always use a little help, and I think we all can. This journal I'm sharing today was made for my grandson, my third commissioned journal from a grandchild. And his brother has one, and his sister has one, and I will share links to those video flip-throughs in the uh, description, video description below. He had certain requests. He didn't want it too girly, and I had to ask him what that meant, and it meant that he didn't want a lot of ribbons and ruffles and, and things hanging down, but he also didn't want a lot of... Um, different things that I didn't think would be girly, and I'll show you some of those along the way that I had to redo whenever he looked through it and said, no, I don't like that. <laughs> He's very particular. His request was for a dinosaur journal, and I used a lot of papers from the dinosaurs kit from Cartabella Paper Company, and I had two sheets of these stickers, and I used several of the other sheet throughout this. This one is going to be included with the journal. And I am going to also link below a way that I make a skinny book thicker, because that's what I did to make this journal. I used a composition notebook. You will probably recognize this cover. If you could see the inside of it, it would be the cover that has the uh, math tables or uh, temperature conversion tables or any of those kind of note things that are printed on the inside. I got this at Dollar Tree and so it wasn't expensive at all and a typical composition notebook is probably about that big. How big is that? Is probably less than half an inch. And I expanded this one, and it is now just over an inch at the binding. And then it is the obviously the typical size for the composition, composition notebook, excuse me, and that's 10, and that's about seven ish. Seven and a quarter. I used some of the papers from the composition notebook in making this as well. Um, for the cover, like I said, I just left this this um, cover in, intact. I didn't take it apart. And that was what was on the back. I used some batik strips of fabric to in, reinforce the spine to put a little bit of a background here. This is some, this in the very back is some very thick handmade watercolor paper that I had a scrap of. And I put it on there. And then I later layered on the dinosaur letters after I inked, and I do not remember which distress oxide I used. It was a green one, obviously. And then this is a card that was in the paper pack from Cartabella as well, and I added it to the back. So we'll go ahead and open it up. The only page that he specifically requested how it was set up was this very first one, the inside of the cover. He picked out these four cards and he wanted this pocket and he wanted this sticker on the inside. And then he said, okay, that's it. And I thought, whew, that was easy. Well, it turns out it wasn't so easy after he looked through it when I was finished. Here, um, this paper is from the paper pack. This uh, green paper here is one that I had in my stash. These are Tim Holtz chipboard ex. No, these are, these are Tim Holtz chipboard uh, phrases. And I will link all the products that I used below so that you can find them yourself. 
And this is just a journaling card that is tucked into two little corners that were left over. I didn't want to waste anything. This is a page from the composition book. And I had folded the um, paper so that it wasn't too much longer than this because I really didn't want it to stick out. And then I added this cutoff from one of the papers. And that's where I got kind of in trouble. He told me I had too many folded pages. Apparently that's too fancy. So you'll see what I did with some of the folded pages that I had to unfold. This is just a card. He doesn't want a lot of writing space. He kind of wants drawing space. He mostly wants space to add his pictures and uh, cards and things like that that he gets that have dinosaurs on them. He wanted a little writing space so that he could write down what it was when he put it in. Here is another pocket and two of the cards from the kit. Here are some of the stickers and I also added some of my washi floral stickers. And that's a folded page. He said that one was okay. This, like I said, was a paper from my stash. I'll see if I can find which paper pad that was from and link it as, as well. We've got two little cards down here in this pocket. They're just index cards with stickers on them. I did use some washi tape throughout um, for decorative purposes, but also this was one of the pages he said didn't need to be folded. Well, it had a folded crease in it and I didn't want the page to be too weak there. So I added that washi tape to reinforce it. Another one of my washi stickers, Tim Holtz phrase. See, I have some ledger paper in here because he really thinks this is cool paper. And then this card acts more like a tab to open that up. This tall pocket just has these cutoffs. He wanted all the pieces from all the papers. And so I made a pocket and I put those little branding strips, I think is what they are, into that pocket. I did have some drawing paper, but not a lot. Washi sticker along with a sticker from the kit. Another folded page. He said I didn't have to unfold it. <laughs> These are papers from the kit. This was these next four pages here. They were a full size sheet, but they were a little bit um, different in that it wasn't an all over print. And I was trying really hard to figure out how to get it in there in a cohesive manner. So I'll show you how I did it. But first I took a piece of that batik fabric to help know to turn that page with a little sticker over it. And in order to do these pages, they were originally, this was the top of the page and this was the bottom of the page. And it was just too big and I couldn't get it in there without cutting something up. And so what I did was I cut the top apart from the bottom and then I folded in between the panels. And then I took washi tape. I butted the two panels up against each other, took washi tape and put it on both sides and glued it. And then I made that my center of the signature so that I could make sure and have my signature ties through it. I had to cut this off because he didn't like the strings hanging down. So I went back and did that. So what you end up with is turning that page, you get the top part of the story and then you get the bottom part of the story. And then another sticker from the kit. I like how these pages coordinated. It's the same print, just different sizes very appealing to my eye. These are just some little, um, oh, I get them at Dollar Tree. They're just little label stickers that I added. And it's because this sticker blended into the page too much. So I took one of my markers and drew little lines on the edges. Well, it bled through. And so I covered up the bleed through on this part with those stickers. And I took some tickets and covered up the bleed through on these two pages. And it also helps since that one remained folded to make it a little stronger. Here I've got a washi sticker and one of the little dinosaur stickers that says Roar. This is actually not the same page. These are two pages, but with the same print. You see that? I had duplicates of, I had like two or three sheets of that particular one. 
And so I just made sure when I was putting my signature together that I had those two facing each other so that when it opened, it made one big spread. These are all stickers from the kit. Here's another flip. And this folded page, he said I could keep it too because he liked it better with that sticker like that for the page to be folded. Go figure, I don't know. Uh, we did make a belly band. He helped me with this too, I should say. And we just folded an extra piece of drawing paper in half and it just slides right up into this. And then we stacked scrapbook paper, washi, and a sticker to decorate that. Another um, fold that I had to cover up to make it stronger. Here is a pocket where I made some of the cards, pull tabs from hand dyed paper, and they all just go into that pocket. Like I said, he didn't want fancy, he just wanted places to put his things, and so that worked for him. He said he likes that one. He liked the tabs on it. Another repaired fold with a little collage down here with washi and a sticker. Here is a big pocket with big journaling cards. He did not mind that I cut up the different words that were on the back because he said it was probably not right anyway. He, he keeps up on all the changes in the dinosaur world. And that's the first signature. These two pieces right here, I just cut out of a magazine ad. I just thought that they went well and put them on there. He didn't see that page. I actually added those after he had gone through. So I hope he doesn't tell me that that doesn't work. Another folded page that he said could stay folded. These here, I put tabs on because they are exactly the same size and it was kind of hard to get a hold of the page to turn it. And again, it was some panels and I wanted it to make sense. And so I didn't have to washi them together like the other one because it didn't go in the center of the book. And I could just go ahead and sew them into the signature. Another folded page, he said that could stay because he wanted the string in the middle. He liked it in the middle. Here is a triple belly band with some more of those giant cards from the kit. And I used a Tim Holtz tiny attacher on both ends because he just thought that was, he, he really likes that stapler. I guess because it's different, I don't know. Another sticker from the kit. This is a junk mail envelope. Here is another Tim Holtz um, chipboard phrase. And this flips open. This is a washi sticker from my stash. And this is a card from the kit that I just glued on there. And then in here, I've got some extra papers tucked. That's one of the papers. A little flip here. That one has to stay because otherwise the page is too big. I had to talk you into that one. He said it's okay because the leaf peeks out. Another salvaged folded page. In this pocket, this is just a piece of random scrapbook paper that I had. I have a set of puffy stickers. And I didn't want him to have to rip the page or, or accidentally tear it while he was trying to get the stickers out. So I took one of the branding strips and folded it over. I got it upside down. There we go. Folded it over in half. And then I just slide the stickers in between the folded parts and I push the stickers in there. And then that helps to pull it out. It gives you something to hold on to. Another flap. And then here is another center of the signature. That one is trimmed as well. In this pocket, my husband and I went with two of our very good friends and we went to the Field Museum in Chicago. And I took a bunch of pictures of the dinosaur skeletons. And we texted one of the pictures to his mom. She showed it to him and he said, that's cool, that's no fair, because he wished that he was there. So we may have to make arrangements for that sometime. I have another couple of pockets made out of the cards, branding strips, and just an index card with some of the extra stickers on it. 
Another folded page, I used the flags from the sticker kit and some of the dots just to decorate that. That's a little hidden one. He thought that was fun. That was okay to have that folded because that was, that was there. Here's a set of three pockets. And I'm just scooting those back in there because they're sliding a little bit. And there's washi tape across the top. This is one of the stickers from the kit. And I put an envelope in here. I put the uh, card from the kit and these are all scrap pieces. He wanted all the pieces. Here is a triple pocket. And these tags are actually from another kit, but the colors, not another kit, from, it's just a package of tags that I got from somewhere. And I'll look and I will try to um, share that information in the description box below if I can find where I got those. I think it was one of those little booklets. They just happen to go perfectly in here. This flap has a little pocket with a couple of little strips with dinosaurs on them. So that was okay as well. So apparently it's okay to have a folded page if you've got something cool on the inside of it. This is just another piece of the card stock that was left over. Um, I left this page folded. I put washi here. There's a sticker and I've got washi on the back. And here's the other side of those papers. I the, This tab had something printed on it, so I added some washi there and just to cut just cut a piece of uh, coffee dyed paper into a circle and put that over it to cover up the letters. And this folded page has the rest of the unused strips and cards. I tied some jute onto a big paper clip. This is a sticker that I just tied some baker's twine through to cover up uh, something. I don't remember what was down there now. I didn't want it on there apparently, so I covered it up. And then at the back, we have this big old dinosaur that I'm sure if I said the name of it, he would let me know I was wrong because I know I'd get it wrong. And another Tim Holtz chipboard, another one of the little um, labels from Dollar Tree. So that is Talon's journal. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the uh, comments section below and I will reply if needed. I read every comment that you send. If you like the video, or if you want to see more, you can check out my homepage. Please like and subscribe if you do um, enjoy the content that I share. And as always, be kind. Bye.